الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله تعالى في قرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها مثانيا تقشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله ذلك هدى الله يهدي به من يشاء ومن يضلل الله فما له من هاد أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumar Allahu nazzala Allahu nazzala ahsan al-hadith Allah is the one who revealed ahsan al-hadith So Allah revealed the best revelation, the best narration Kitabam mutashabihan Kitabam mutashabihan Book, what is that? What is the Ahsan al-Hadith? It is the book in which there is Mutashabiham Mathaniya means in which there are ayat that are similar Mutashabihan and they are oft repeated. Its parts are similar, right? As you know the stories are mentioned repeatedly. So its parts are uh, similar to each other and Mathaniya oft repeated. Taq sha'irru minhu juludu ladina yakshawna rabbahum. Taq sha'irru means it gives uh, it gives a shivering or it gives goosebumps as they say. It makes uh, it gives shivering on the skins. Minhu julud. Julud Julud is the Jama Mukassar of Jild, right? What is Jild? Skin. Julud is the Jama Mukassar. So, the sh so like if you translate it word by word, it will be shiver, uh, sh shivering to uh, the skins. Alladina yakshona rabbahum. Those uh, who have Khashia of the Lord but when you translate it word by word uh, it, it doesn't make sense so you have to like uh, once you know the meaning of each word you have to like organize them in the sentence so the meaning of that translated sentence would be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed uh, the best of narrations which is a book and which has similar parts of repeated and the skin of those who uh, have khashi of their lord shivers right when does it shiver when they listen to it right thumma talinu juluduhum wa qulubuhum and then they feel relaxed in their skins and their hearts so the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a relaxation to the skins and hearts of the people who have khashi of Allah at the remembrance of Allah, at the remembrance of Allah. So um, due to the re remembrance of Allah, their skins and hearts feel relaxed. This is what uh, it translates to ذَلِكَ هُدَى اللَّهِ يَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ هُدَى اللَّهِ That is the guidance of Allah ذَلِكَ هُدَى اللَّهِ يَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ يَهْدِي means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides مَنْ يَشَاءُ to whomever he wills وَمَنْ يُدْلِلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَاتْ and whoever Allah uh, leads astray فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ هَاتْ then that person will not have anyone to guide him is the meaning and understanding of the ayah clear mm -hmm. this is in surah al zumar the grammatical aspect 
we have studied uh, from whatever we have studied until now as you can see that kitaban and mutashabihan these are in nasab right kitaban mutashabihan are in nasab and uh, julud julud is jama mukassar right and uh, over here juluduhum hum is a dhameer which refers to their uh, they, like their skins we'll get to that later but julud is again jama mukassar and khulub khulubuhum their hearts so hum is again a dhameer we'll get to that later but khulub is the jama mukassar of qalb right ila zikrillah at the remembrance of allah and zalika uh, that is the guidance of allah hudallahi yahdi bihi may yasha wa may yudlilillahu fama lahu min had so jama mukassar we uh, took uh, we took that we studied about jama mukassar in last class and um, you know that jama mukassar is something that you will be able to understand and learn by in increasing your vocabulary but there are some forms like julud qulub these are like similar forms we began ism by saying that there are four things that are necessary to understand and use an ism Uh, so that it makes sense in a sentence those four things were adad usat um jins adad usat and i'rab right so we have studied three of them and uh, jins we know that it's it can either be muzakkar or muannath and we know how to identify them right then in adad it either uh, it is wahid or muthanna or jama and then in jama it can either be salim or mukassar right and we know the i'rab rafa nasb jar so those 18 forms of a, a single wahid ism you should be able to make 18 forms for that um wasat is the fourth topic that we will study today inshallah taala and wasat or capacity can either be ma'rifa or it can be nakira what is ma'rifa what is nakira let's try to relate this concept to the english language so we have a better understanding of wasat in english we call uh, we have something called articles right a and and the the so if we you are referring to a specific noun uh let's say there is a story there is a sentence about a specific thing let's say for example we are talking about a boy right a boy who lives in texas or a boy who lives in so if we are starting the sentence if we when we start the sentence so we start with the article a right a boy this is how we start it right but when we want to use the same entity in the uh, subsequent such sentences in the sentences that come later so we do not use a again rather we use the right why because we want 
to use the to make it definite so the readers or listeners know that this is the same boy from whom we started the story or the sentence right so similarly so um, like when you compare definite and indefinite indefinite is something that is like um, th there are a lot of that let's say for example uh, we are talking about um, a class a class of 30 students right so in a class of 30 students in a class of 30 students all of them are students right all of them are students so when you refer to a specific student indefinitely you would use like a student right and this can be anyone but when you want to uh, like point out to that specific student you you either you use your name or if it is already known that who that person is you will use the for it right so let's say in a class of 30 students if i ask how many students have the name have the name z or how many students have the name hamad so it will be filtered and the result will be very few like maybe one or two right so then those are those those are the definite uh, in capacity but when you refer generally to students they are indefinite right so the same principle over here in ma'rifa and nakira Ma'rifa is something definite or limited and the wusat of Nakira is uh, broad, is huge, right? So Nakira is something which is general and it is wasir, which means, uh, which means that it is broad in scope. But when you, uh, when you want to make, when you want to point out a specific entity in Nakira, you would either use the name of that person, let's say Zayed or Hamad, or you would use the, if that is already known. So this is the same concept in Marifa and Nakira. Marifa is definite or it's mahdud, it's specific, right? And Nakira is wasi, it's broad. How do we identify if an ism is Marifa or Nakira? In jinns, we had muzakkar and muannas right we have we had masculine and feminine right um, if we study the rules of muannas and we know those rules what will happen is we can take an ism and check for if it satisfies those rules for muannas and if it does not then it automatically means that it is muzakkar right the same concept over here we will study marifa we will study marifa and we will see what are what are those things that make an ism marifa and if it does not fall if an ism does not fall into any of those then it would automatically be nakira right mm -hmm. so there are seven categories of marifa there are seven categories of marifa we will study just five of them and keep two for a later time we will study five of them and they are pretty easy uh, six are very easy uh, you would have to uh, i mean out of the five that we will study four are very easy they are straightforward and uh, there's the fifth one which we'll have to kind of uh, use our brain to understand what it is so Marifa is something that's known or definite. Marifa is something which is known or definite and Nakira is unknown 
और जनरल और इंडेफिनेट सो वॉट आर दी फाइव कैटेगरीज ऑफ मारिफा दैट वी विल स्टडी टूडे द फर्स्ट द फर्स्ट वन इज वेरी इजी देर आर अ टोटल ऑफ सेवन बट टूडे वील स्टडी फाइव and out of those five the first four are very easy and straight forward ismul alam the first one is ismul alam or in english proper nouns proper noun what is a proper noun um, in english what what is a proper noun um, <laughs> we you, if you remember we had common nouns and proper nouns mm-hmm. right so proper noun is the name of a specific thing like for example name of a person right mm-hmm. or name of a city name of a country right and if you remember we had that um rule that you cannot start a proper noun with a lower case letter let's say you have z right so you cannot write z like this rather you have to write it like this right so you cannot use the first letter should always be upper case so all of these were proper nouns proper nouns are names of those things that are known right if you uh, like you can just google what a proper noun is and you you will be able to understand the meaning so uh, like for example if we are talking about places or countries and if we are uh, like india for example india Uh, the country india is it proper noun or common noun proper, proper noun right but if we are uh, if we said just countries or cities mm-hmm. then it would be common noun oh. right so ismul alam or proper noun is like name of something so your name hamad mm-hmm. is a proper noun but if i were to refer you like a boy or student or something like that then it it would be common noun so the first one is proper nouns the second pronouns dhamair or pronouns right what are pronouns he she it they like that right in arabic we have something like huwa hiya right huwa hiya hum huwa hiya ana nahnu these are all pronouns we will study about them in detail we'll have a separate topic but for now just to know what it is in english we have he she they same way in arabic huwa hiya ana these are pronouns proper nouns are the names uh, let me write examples too right so these are pronouns uh the second one is pronouns third
اسما العشارہ اور ڈیمانسٹریٹو پرونس ان انگلش وی ہیو دس دیٹ رائٹ وی یوز دیم ٹو ڈسکرائب سم تھنگ وچ از ایدر نیئر اور فار دے آر کال ڈیمانسٹریٹو پرونس اوکے سو سملرلی دس دیٹ دوز دیز وی ہیو ان عربک ایز ویل اینڈ دے آر ہاضا ہاضی ذالکا تلکا ہا الائی الائی کا آل آف دیز آر ڈیمانسٹریٹو پرونس سو یس ہاضا ہاضی الائی کا دیز آر ڈیمانسٹریٹو پرونس سو آؤٹ آف دا فائیو دیٹ وی آر اسٹڈنگ ٹوڈے وی نو تھری آف دیم The fourth one is Asma ul Mausula or relative pronouns. In English, we use like whose, whom, that, like the one who, something like this, whose, whom, these comes under relative pronouns. Like they relate, uh, we have a lot, we have uh, a lot of them in Arabic as well, like Allazi, you have You can see, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu. O you who have believed, right? So, al lazina, okay? Al lazi, al lati, al lazina. All of these are relative pronouns or asma ul mausula. Any questions until now or anything that you are not able to understand? No. Pretty straightforward. So what does it mean for Malifa? The moment you see something is a proper noun, the moment you see something is a Zameer or an, an Ism that is from a small Ishara or an Ism from a small Mausula. These are specific Asma that you will know them. The moment you see that, You don't have to think about whether it is Malifa, Nakira, straightforward it is Malifa, without a doubt. So these are the four and we'll study the fifth one now. Can I erase this? No. The fifth one. The fifth one. It has a name, but I would like to mention that name after we have studied the concept. Otherwise the name may scare you. What is the fifth one? The fifth one is converting a nakira ism into a marifa ism converting a nakira ism into a marifa ism before we get into that let's try to do that in english right so as we started with the story of a boy right so we would say uh, there was a boy who lived in plano right And when we have to use the same boy mm. in the sentence again, what do we do? We the. the, right? We use, instead of a boy, use the boy. So how do you convert an, uh, how do you convert an indefinite noun into a definite in English? By adding no. the, very simple. 
we have the same concept in Arabic we have the same concept in Arabic let's start with a Wahid ism Kitabun Kitabun right this is a Nakira ism this is a Nakira ism how is it a Nakira ism from what we know is Kitabun ismul alam is it the name of something? No. Is Kitabun a Zamir? No. Is Kitabun uh, uh, ismul, from Ismul uh, Ishara? No. Is Kitabun uh, the ism, Ismal Mausula? No. So what is it? It is a Nakira Ism. Right? Converting a Nakira Ism into a Marifa is a straightforward process. Add Alif Lam Okay. So we had the Kitabun Nakira Ism. Converting it into Marifa is simply adding an Alif Lam to it. And the Tanween has now disappeared. The Tanween has now disappeared. This is a very important concept to understand. In fact, we could say that Tanween and Alif Lam are enemies to each other Tanween and Alif Lam are enemies so they do not come on the ism together they do not come on the ism together right so this is for Wahid ism this is for Wahid ism we will have to see how this works for all those 18 forms remember those 18 forms so we have to check to see if it's the same rule for all those 18 or will it be different so we'll get we'll get into each one of them but this for, this is for wahid ism what will happen you add alif lam before the ism and delete the uh, one of the haraka one of the haraka this is for rafa right this is for rafa now let's look into nasb what is the nasab of kitabun? Can you kitabun? And will it be will it be like this? With an alif, right? With an alif. So this is important. It will be with an alif. Now, if I want to convert the nasab form of wahid ism into a marifa into a marifa i would add an alif lam right and would delete the one of the haraka so if it it is dhamma sign it will be a dhamma if it is fathatain it will be a fatha right what about the alif will it be there or not no no right why No, because so the alif, no, 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 the alif is supposed to be there when there is a tanween in nasb, in nasb right? Yeah. So alif is there in nasb whenever there is a tanween. Yeah. Now, since one of the haraka is gone, it is no more a tanween. It's just a single fatha, fatha right? So the alif is also gone, mm. right? So the alif is also gone. So it would be Al Kitaba Al Kitaba, right? What about 
jar what about jar what would it be al kitabi right no complexity because there is no alif so kitabu kitabun can when converted into marifa the rafa nasb and jar is al kitabu al kitaba and al kitabi I want you to tell me the rafa, nasb, and jar after you convert them into marifa. Okay, so now you can see we have a muannas ism two here, right? Uh, kitab was muzakkar, so we have a muannas two, and uh, these are muzakkar. So how it it's the same rule for whether muzakkar or muannas, it's the same rule. So what would be the rafa of when you convert into marifa of qalamun rafa nasb oh, and jar rafa uh, for uh, uh, for uh, marifa yeah yeah it, it would be uh, al al qalam mm -hmm. nasb and uh, al qalama mm -hmm. and al qalam simple mirwahatun al al mirwahatu mm -hmm. al mirwahata al mirwahat Babun. Al babu. Mm -hmm. al Simple, right? So we now we know for wahid ism, for wahid ism, the muzakkar and muannas, rafa nasb and jar for al. Uh, when you add al al or you when you convert into a marifa, right? Next is musanna. Next is musanna. So what would be the musanna of kitabun, the nakira version, kitabun? Then nasbanjar? Right. So kitabani? Kitabaini and Kitabaini. Simple, right? Yeah. Kitabaini, 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 right? Converting them into Marifa, converting them into Marifa, we add Alif Lam. Do, do, do we need to remove anything from here? Remember the rule that I said, Tanveen and Aliflam are enemies. They don't come together. Was in, in this ism, is there a Tanveen anywhere? No. So when there is no Tanveen, the, you don't have to do any change apart from adding Aliflam. So Kitabani, Kitabaini, Kitabaini would be Al Kitabani, Al Kitabaini, Al Kitabaini. Simple. What about Muannas? What about Muannas? So let's say Sayyara. What would be the uh, Musanna of Sayyaratun? Musanna, dwell. Sayyaratani, Sayyaratani, Sayyaratani. Right, so it will be the same here. Sayaratani, uh, Sayaratani, Sayaratani. Converting these three asma into marifa, into marifa. Simply add alif lam. Al 
سیارہ تانی یا بٹ ڈو یو نوٹس سم تھنگ اوور ہیئر السیارہ تانی اور السیارہ تانی لائک ڈز اٹ گو ٹوگیدر ال یا اٹ نو ایکس سو واٹ از دا ریزن فار دیٹ از سم تھنگ وچ وی لک لیٹر آن ان شاء اللہ ان پرابلی ان دا نیکسٹ کلاس دیر آر دیر سم تھنگ کال حروف القمریا حروف الشمسیہ سو دیر آر سرٹن لیٹرس فار ناؤ جسٹ ٹو گیو یو ہائی لیول دیر آر سرٹن لیٹرس اف الف لام از ایڈیڈ بفور دیم سو یو ڈونٹ ریڈ دا لام ریدر یو مکسس اینڈ یو مکس وتھ دا لیٹر اینڈ یو سے اسیارتانی اسیارتانی اسے so uh, there are certain letters with which work that way and certain letters which like kaf for example which work this way so they are called sun and moon letters which is a topic for next time but for now for now this is this does not have a tanween this does not have a tanween so alif lam is an enemy of tanween since there is no tanween no other change you just add alif lam you just add alif lam right So don't worry about this as al thing, we'll let, uh, take it later. But for now, you just add alif lam. So for wahid ism, for wahid ism, right? Whether muzakkar or mu'annath, whether um, uh, muzakkar or mu'annath, and for musanna, whether muzakkar or mu'annath, we just add alif lam. But for wahid ism, if there is a tanween, we delete the tanween. Simple, right? What about Jama? What about Jama? Jama, as you know, there are two types, right? There are two types, Salim and Ni Salim. Salim. Muslim Muna. Muslim? مونا مذکر رائٹ مسلم مونا مسلم مونا دین نس پینچر وڈ بی مسلم مینا سمپل اف یو وانٹ ٹو کنورٹ دیم ان ٹو معرفہ یو جسٹ ایڈ الف لام رائٹ اینڈ سنس دیر از نو تنوین سنس دیر از نو تنوین دیر از نو ادر چینج سو مسلم مونا وڈ بی وڈ بی المسلم مونا المسلم مینا المسلم سمپل رائٹ This was for Muzakkar. This was for Muzakkar. What about Mu'annas? What is the Mu'annas of uh, Muslimuna? Muslima Tun. Muslima Tun, Muslima Tin, Muslima Tin. Right? Converting them into Marifa. Converting them into Marifa. You tell me now, how do I convert it into Ma'arifah? You got it. <laughs> so the Tanween, the Tanween will go away. Why? Because Alif Lam and Tanween are enemies, right? So Muslimatun would be Al Muslimatu and then Al Muslimati, Al Muslimati. Remember in the last class when we were Uh, looking at the ayah in al muslimina wal muslimati wal mu'minina wal mu'minati we had alif lam right and i told you we will see this in the next class so we had in al muslimina wal muslimati we did not have muslimatin because alif lam was there so those were ma'rifa right those were ma'rifa this was for jama salim right pretty straightforward simple Just the rule is to remember that Alif Lam and Tanvi don't go together, right? What about Jama Mukassar? Remember we said that Remember we said that Jama Mukassar has the same Arab as the Arab of Wahid Ism, right? As the Arab of Wahid Ism. So what for Wahid Ism, like Kitabun for example, What's the Arab? Kitabun, Kitaban, Kitabin, right? 
and if alif lam is added al kitabu al kitaba al kitabi for jama mukassar the jama mukassar of kitabun is jama mukassar kutubun kutubun right kitabun kutubun Kitab jama yeah. right kutubun if you want to convert it into marifa so it will have the same arab as the wahid is so kutubun would be kutubun is the jama mukassar yeah. so what would it be al al kutubu al kutubu al kutuba al kutubi simple right yeah. you get rid of the tanwin al kutubu al kutuba al kutubi right qalamun so the jama mukassar is aqlamun so al aqlamu al aqlama al aqlami simple uh, the asma that we saw until now were munsarif asma were munsarif asma we have ghair munsarif and mabni as well so let's take some of the ghair munsarif asma and convert them into marifa right and see what happens so i will take three of them these are the ghair munsarif asma if you want to convert them into marifa if you want to convert them into marifa you would add alif lam right so akbaru would become al akbaru right masajid will become المساجد غرباء will become it's the jama mukassar of gharib which means a strange stranger akbaru al akbaru al masajid al ghuraba right the nasb and jar now here's a catch okay the nasb and jar let's say for nakira for nakira for the ghair munsarif asma these would be akbaru akbara akbara this would be masajidu masajida masajida ghurabau ghurabaa ghuraba for the nasb and jar of these it would be al akbar ra and then al akbari al akbari so the al the alif lam has the power to give a kasra even to a ghair munsarif ism to a ghair munsarif ism so masajidu this would be al masajidu al masajida al masajidi so this is the important thing so 
the rule over here is that alif lam has the power to give a kasra even to a ghair munsarif ism when it is ma'rifa so al ak al akbari uh, the nakira version of this would be akbara akbara but when it uh, the ma'rifa version when the alif lam is added would be al akbari al masajidi and al ghuraba e al ghuraba e mabni so for mabni there is no change like for example we have an ism can i raise this So this is a mabni ism. Marba is the jama of marid. Marid. Marid means someone who is sick, right? So marba is the jama for that. So the rafa nasb anjar would be al marba, al marba, al marba, right? No rule in that. What about the other categories that we studied in? Um, remember when we talked about ghair munsarif asma right mm. and if you have written in your notes i want you to uh, take that part out uh, for ghair munsarif asma what were the categories right so now you if if you have a question like ghair munsarif asma if we are converting them into a ma'rifa from a nakira mm-hmm. if you are converting a ghair munsarif ism into a ma'rifa then we said that what would happen it gives a kasra for the jar jar version right with the alif lam mm-hmm. but most of the categories of ghair munsarif asma are names of something if you notice names of prophets female arab. female arab names then male names that end with alif noon male names that end with tamar buta right so there are very few asma that are not names and when when there is like name of something when something is a proper noun you won't add a the to it in english right you you wouldn't say the zaid or the hamad because the name itself is already marifa or definite mm-hmm. right yeah. so the five uh, the four uh, this this was the fifth one right converting a, a nakiraism into a marifa right the four that we took they are already marifa so you wouldn't add an alif lam to them mm-hmm. right yeah. you wouldn't say al z or because it's already a marifa mm-hmm. so this only applies to those that are nakira and the name of this that i wanted to give you at the end is the fifth category you can write it down its name is muarraf bil lam muarraf bil lam so what what does that mean that you are making making it a marifa ism from a nakira ism with the adding of alif lam mm-hmm. muarraf bil lam is converting a nakira ism into a marifa ism by adding one last point that i wanted to um, address is in the category of ghair munsarif asma in the category of ghair munsarif asma if you can go back to that mm-hmm. names of prophets uh, female arab names male names that end with ta marbuta mm-hmm. so i want you to add a uh, in in miscellaneous asma i want you to add 
a, a new point saying comparative and superlative degrees of some asma like we saw the example of akbaru right mm. akbaru uh, akbar is the comparative uh, degree of kabir so the actual word is kabirun okay yeah. the comparative or superlative is akbar mm. like for example um, we we have a lot of names that are, are in that form like afzal for example afzal right the name afzal is a comparative or superlative degree mm. akbar afzal and uh, akmal right all of these that come on the same form is a comparative and so so comparative and superlative degrees of some nouns are ghair munsarif so this you can write this as a new sifat used for comparative or superlative sifat you know sifat are adjectives right mm-hmm. so sifat used for comparative slash superlative degrees are ghair munsarif so these are all sifat right kabir jameel so the comparative uh, form of jameel would be ajmal and the comparative form of kabir would be akbar the comparative form of azim would be azam right mm-hmm. so these are names that we see people use them azim is azam kabir is akbar and uh, jameel is ajmal right mm-hmm. so uh, so the comparative and superlative forms of sifat are ghair munsarif this is a new category no questions سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله